Okay, so generally after I get uh, ready for the day, then it's time to uh, figure out uh, the topic that I want to do my next video on. So like today's video, I'm doing it on extension tubes for macro photography. And um, yesterday I spent the majority of the day doing B-roll for my video. So if you guys are unfamiliar with what B-roll actually is, uh, B-roll is all the video that I generally do voiceovers on top of. So uh, the product uh, shots, uh, what the product is or what it does, and then I just, I'm able to talk over that kind of stuff. So, um, and then the second part of the video that I generally try to do is the intro and the outro. And I usually, sometimes I'll do those on the same day and sometimes I won't. Um, but through the magic of video and editing, uh, it all just kind of seems very seamless. No one really knows. Um, you know how long it actually takes and that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this video because uh, I generally spend maybe sometimes a day if I'm really crafty that day I can crank out a video it just depends on uh, if I've got a lot of stuff to add to it or not uh, most of the time it usually takes two days and sometimes it can even take three days if I've got maybe a couple places that I would like to go or a lot of material that I've got to cover um, then I will just take what footage I can when I can Okay, so the next part of the video is the intro and the outro part here. So most of the time I'll just use this set here. Uh, well, I set it up this way because I don't ever have to worry about what's gonna be in the shot. I don't have to worry about, oh, this is messed up or that's messed up or whatever. It's just in the shot, I'm there, and then that's it. So um, generally I'll have the A5000 set up here and I've got a selfie screen so that I can see myself and make sure that I'm in the shot and everything, make sure that I've got my framing uh, correct and all that biz. Um, I usually just use a couple of continuous lights here. They're just uh, CFLs, kind of big. Uh, I think I got them from Amazon or something, and I just use a shoot-through umbrella uh, most of the time to, to do my lighting on the scene. The microphone that I use is the H4N, and I sync uh, these two up by going three, two, one, pow. And that's how I sync up the audio and post. And I'll show you guys how I do that here in a little bit. And then generally the last component is this backlight. And I'll just turn that on to give me some separation from this background. The background's usually dark. And I generally like to wear uh, black clothing. Some people would say, you're all emo, Mark. You wear a lot of black, but come on now. Black is my favorite non-color, and I love it, so I will wear it until the day that I die, ironically. Isn't that weird? So anyway, um, the uh, I, th I figured that the next thing that I would show you all is actually how I do my intro and outro. Um, I mean, most of it you already see, but you never really get to see the actual uh, process, so I think I'll go ahead and do that for you guys now. And I went on ahead and set up all of this stuff just to sort of reduce the amount of monotony. I mean, people know how cameras go on tripods and stuff like that, so I just skipped all that. And I get the, uh, get the camera set up the way I need it to be, and finally lock it all down. Okay. Three, two, one, pow! Set this up just a little bit. Pull up my notes. Gotta have notes. Okay, here we go. On today's show, we're gonna be talking macro. Little intro right before the intro. That's how we row. And then we'll go into the actual beginning of the video after the uh, intro rolls through. So, 
Hey there folks, welcome back to the photo video show where we explore all things photography. I'm your host Mark Puckett and on today's show we're going to be talking about macro photography. But more specifically we're going to be talking about how to use some macro tubes that I happen to find on Amazon.com and avoid the whole expense of actually going out and buying a dedicated macro lens. So once you get through the first part of it or whatever you can kind of uh, work your way into other things. And, uh, I don't know, this is just how I do it. It's workflow, workflow, workflow. Okay, so then I set up for the, the next part. So a few episodes ago, we were talking about how Sony was getting ready to release their brand new 90 millimeter macro lens. And I was kind of on the fence about whether or not I wanted to buy it. So instead, I just wanted to see how some of my existing Sony lenses were gonna perform with just a regular old set of extension tubes. And generally, if you kind of cut up your uh, intro in the sections, uh, you know, you can always do the editing later. It works out perfect. At least it does for me anyway. That way you don't try and say too much and then do a lot of ands and ums and stuff like that. But even if you do, again, you can cut those things out. So I hopped on Amazon.com, grabbed myself a really decent set of digital and automatic extension tubes that will actually work on the Sony NEX systems, including the A6000 and the A5000, A5100, all of the E-mount uh, cameras that Sony has, these things will work on and they will pass on autofocus data directly through. They are hollow tubes, but up till this point, they really do work relatively well. I'm I honestly quite impressed. So if you guys are ready to go ahead and check these things out, let's get started. So then after I get through with that part, what I'll end up doing is I will, uh, I will go ahead and do my outro. Uh, and I already know what I want to say in the middle. And even if I don't, I'm always just going to, I'll probably end up doing some voiceover uh, work anyway. So that's, that's all I usually end up doing. So uh, I'll do my outro and uh, knock this part of the video out. Be done. So there you have it, there you go folks. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends and throw it all around the social network things and suches and the whatnots and also subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date with all the new things that we got going on here at the Photo Video Show. At any rate, I'm your host Mark Puckett. Thanks again for stopping right here at the Photo Video Show and I will see you guys again on the next one. And that's how it's done. All right, now that I got everything recorded, pop out my SD card and take it on over here to the computer so that I may begin the editing process. So as you can see, I use Final Cut Pro 10 um, and I can pull up each and every one of the, the clips here, scrub through, see which ones I need and I can go ahead and use those. And if I'm not mistaken, let's see, yeah, I've already used that one. So this is the only one that I need to bring in and need to bring that into actually that's the intro for the extension tubes and I'll go ahead and import selected so once I get it all imported in I'll have a whole list of uh, different clips and stuff uh, all these April 23rd clips or all those b-rolls that I did yesterday and they're all going to be in the video that you all will probably see. So now that I've got all of my footage imported, it's time for me to start actually cutting and editing all the footage together, which in most cases usually takes me about another hour or so. And then uh, depending on the type of footage that I have, um, I will then start doing the voiceover work as well. 
And now I had to bring the microphone over as well because it has the audio file stored on it. So I've got it hooked up to the computer and I'm going to import that. And then I'm going to use this microphone as my main microphone to do uh, the voiceover work on top of the B-roll. Okay, so I've now got all the footage imported, I've got all the audio imported, and now it's time to start doing some uh, editing and get it right in uh, my video editor. So let's go ahead and get that going. Okay, so this is my project window, and uh, these are all my libraries, and I'm on the extension tubes library, so I can hide that now and save myself some room there. And here is the video clip that I did earlier. Handsome boy, handsome boy. And um, these here are all the clips of all of the uh, B-roll that I took yesterday. So all the stuff that I wanted to demonstrate with the extension tubes, I've got all those clips now imported. Um, and I've also got the B-roll footage of uh, the actual product shots and stuff like that. So any camera movements and stuff that I did yesterday, uh, I've got all those done. And now I just got to arrange them all so that it seems like it's logical and can actually be used in this project. So, um, so I've already did uh, I've already done some of the work. Um, got uh, all the B-roll product shots down here. Now I just need to. Um, find the clip that I took for the intro and the outro and I believe that was the MA2826 and then if I come down here to the bottom where the audio is I hit command click that right click on it and then click synchronize clips so basically what this function will do is it will match up that three, two, one, the whole thing, and it will synchronize that audio together so that um, the audio and the video actually line up and there's no uh, offset. You know, you don't want it to be offset. Okay, so it, it's synchronized, and I will drag it down here onto the timeline. And as you see, okay. Three, two. So we're good to go there. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do with my clip, and this is what I always do, is I'm gonna to go to the audio and I'm going to get rid of the storyline audio because that audio is what is uh, being recorded from the camera. And generally audio from a camera sounds like crap, so I just get rid of it. All right, so let me find the first big portion here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just, before I start cutting up this clip, I want to do everything that I want to do to it, whether it be color correction or doing audio adjustments before I ever start chopping up my clip or else I'll have to do it to each and every section of the video and that just takes way too much time. So these are lessons learned over the years. Um, so anyway, the, the color is pretty good. It's, it's a basically a flat picture style, but the audio is always something that I want to edit. So I'll start playing hey it. Hey folks, welcome back to the Photo Video Show, where we explore all things photography. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and on today's show, we're gonna be talking about macro photography. But more specifically, we're gonna be talking about how to use some macro tubes that I happen to find on Amazon.com and avoid the whole expense of actually going out and buying a dedicated macro lens. So once you get through the first part of it or whatever, you can kind of uh, work your way into other things and uh, uh, work your way into other Hey there folks, welcome back to the photo video show where we explore all things photography. I'm your host Mark Puckett and on today's show we're going to be talking about macro photography. But more specifically, we're going to be talking about how to use some macro tubes that I happen to find on Amazon.com and avoid the show where we explore all things photography. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and on today's show, we're going to be talking about macro photography. But more specifically, we're going to be talking about how to use some macro tubes that I happen to find on Amazon. Uh, okay, so I've applied all of the audio effects that I generally do with uh, my videos. Um, I've got these, I, I know my microphones pretty well at this point, point. I know how I want my voice to sound on camera. So uh, I usually do, as you saw earlier, I did a stereo left and right to make sure that uh, the audio is going to be on both the left and the right channel. Uh, I always use the equals, 
equalization of loudness. It basically kind of normalizes everything uh, a little bit. And uh, then I add a voiceover enhancement, punchy mail voiceover, just leave it at its default. And then I usually add the bass enhancer uh, and I set it to dynamic bass. I don't know if anyone's really, uh, if anyone really cares about all this kind of stuff, but uh, this is essentially what I do to make uh, a video. So now that I've got all the audio stuff done, I just kind of want to look at my video and make sure that it's uh, the way I generally like to see it. And most of the time, uh, if you'll notice here and here, I've got a couple of scopes and I can see that the blacks aren't crushed, which is good. And the only thing that's actually clipping up here in the highlights, uh, this is sort of like a, um, a histogram for photography. And I can see that uh, there's just a few little uh, clippings in the highlights, and that's probably back um, here where the, the light is, or it may even be my necklace. I, honestly, I don't know. But what I'll do is I will bring it down here to looks, get rid of that last search, and I'll do, uh, let's see, now it's under color, and just add a color correction to the whole thing. And then I'll go up here to video and do some color correction and I'll use these as my guide. Uh, I'm not going to have to do a whole lot to it. I'll bring down the shadow just a little bit to add a small bit of extra punch. Not a whole lot because, like I said, it's, it's pretty much where it needs to be already. And uh, I was pretty well front lit. So everything looks pretty good. I'm just going to leave it just like that. Now it's time for me to start chopping up this video so that I get rid of all the ands and the ums and the whats and the whatnots and all that kind of stuff and actually produce a finished video. So all this stuff I know that I can get rid of because this was just me kind of prepping and then talking to you guys on the other camera as you can see here. Um, so I'm not going to leave that in the final video, so I got to get rid of all that. So I find where my intro is at. Hey there folks, welcome back to the photo video show. We On today's show, we're going to be talking macro. All right, so that was the pre-intro, so I will make sure that I hit blade and I will cut everything before that out because I know I'm not going to be using it. And then I will cut it just after that. And then I'll find the first portion of where I'm actually talking to you guys again. And hey there, folks, welcome back to the photo video show. We so I'm going to cut it right before there. And then I'm going to get rid of everything in the middle from that. First part of avoid the whole expense of actually going out and buying a dedicated macro lens. All right, so cut that off right there. And then I think I started talking to you guys again for a few seconds. And then I think I started talking again here. Okay, so then I set up for the... So a few episodes ago, we were talking about how Sony was getting ready to release their brand new 90 millimeter macro lens. And I was kind of on the fence about whether or not I wanted to buy it. So instead, I just wanted to see how some of my existing Sony lenses were gonna perform with just a regular old set of extension tubes. All right, so I will start cutting that up. And I basically will do that for the rest of this intro video. So anything that was pertinent uh, or whatever, then I just I get rid of the stuff that I don't want to have. I do jump cuts. I don't use B-roll footage or anything generally on these parts uh, to kind of cover up those jump cuts because I just don't really care. I, most people I have found, uh, they're more interested in the information that I'm trying to put out there, not necessarily how well the video was actually edited. Um, I personally happen to like jump cuts. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Um, you know, most people think that it's a very unprofessional way to edit video, but uh, I find it kind of funny and humorous, and it if you do it fast enough, if you do your jump cuts fast enough, uh, you do it the right places, it actually, I think it works out really well. So uh, once I get done with all this, I'm not going to bore you guys with the rest of it. Once I get done with all this, then I'm going to start uh, working on voiceover stuff. Hooray for new camera angles. I'm getting ready to do the voiceover work and... I'm basically just going to kind of give you a brief rundown of how it's done. It's really, it's not that complicated and I'm not going to bore you with the process and 
every single video is just a little bit different because every single video has different amounts of b-roll that I actually have to talk over so um, down here on the timeline I have my b-roll footage and I basically got to fill up this time and uh, talk about what I see how I feel about the footage uh, how I feel about the 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 performance of the item that I was working with and, and everything that it, it, it does and basically give my thoughts because I have a lot of people out there that depend on me and my experience to kind of give them a general idea of all the different types of photography and videography project, uh, products that are out there so that they can make an actual informed decision and I get to be their guinea pig. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to watch my footage and then uh, I'm going to get kind of a feel of how the flow is going and then I'm just going to record my audio over top of it. So here in Final Cut Pro I'm just going to hit command option 8 and I'm going to bring up the uh, record voiceover and I've already got to set it to my H4 and the name of each of the recordings are going to be voiceover so that I know which ones are voiceover and which ones are my background music. So, um, so I'm going to start here with the intro to the extension tubes that I uh, purchased. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit the record button and give you guys a little brief intro into how this is actually done. So I'm introducing you to the DJ Extension Tube Set. These are a couple of electronic tubes that will pass on autofocus data and uh, so as you can see, when you say and and then you start to mess up, you gotta stop the recording and then uh, help fix that stuff. So it really, when a lot of times when I'm trying to do it on the fly, um, it's mainly because I want to seem more personal. I don't want it to seem so written out and scripted. And I want to be able to add some of my own personality in there. And again, if you always write it out, you always sound a little bit robotic. So um, I try to avoid that. But it can be a little bit time consuming simply because uh, you are human. You're going to make some mistakes and you're going to mess up and everything. But that's essentially what I do as I'm recording uh, my voiceovers is I just sort of watch the footage and then talk over it again. I'm not going to bore you with the entire process, but when I get done, we'll come back and I will show you exactly how I set up my intro uh, video and how I finally export and upload. Okay, so I finally got all of my uh, voiceover work done and I'm trying to hurry up. Uh, this is actually much faster when I'm not also trying to include a uh, behind the scenes look but at any rate um, now that I got all the voiceover work done I got all of the primary video chopped up cut up and put where I want it now I've got to add some background music to the video so I love background music it really does kind of help hide a lot of the uh, stuff that isn't all that important like the silences and all that kind of biz and what I'm going to do is I am going to go to my last video and I'm going to pull up that timeline. And I believe it was long enough that I can use some of the music from there. But before I do the music, I think that I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, video intro part. So I'll let you check that, that out. Uh, let me zoom in here and show you guys what that is all about. Okay, so here's my intro video and I'm just going to kind of copy this thing and... take it back over to my current project and this sits right in between the opener of the video and the actual vocal intro so I'm just gonna hit uh, command V paste that let me get rid of this and get rid of that figure out where the music is actually gonna end going to add the flash in between here I'm also going to add the shutter noise right below that uh, 
All right, let's see how this sounds. On today's show, we're going to be talking macro. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the photo. All right, that looked pretty good. The only uh, issue that I actually had with it was I thought that the space between the the first part and the uh, opener was a little long, so I'm going to edit that just a smidge. So I'll delete that and then scale that down just a smidgen, and then I'm going to add the transition back on. So let's hear it one more time. On today's show, we're going to be talking macro. Much better. That's exactly what I wanted. So generally when the uh, second uh, shutter sound pops up right here and I get ready to talk, I have one specific song that I usually like to always put in. So let me go back to the round flash intro and there it is. It's a song called Grapes. I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to try to position it right above where the transition actually happens. So I want it to start kind of coming in right there at the shutter sound. So let's see how that sounds. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the photo video show. We explore all... That was pretty close. Push it back just a smidge. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the photo video show. We explore all things photography. I'm your host, Mark Puckett. And on today's show, we're going to be... All right, so the intro music is now laid down. I'm going to see how far it goes. It looks like it's going to end pretty close to the end of this clip, which is absolutely perfect because that means that I can bring in the second song, and I think that's called uh, Land of Rhinoplasty. And again, let me go ahead and iterate the fact that, you know, videos don't have to be this complicated, but the fact of the matter is that I have gotten to a point now where I like to add a little bit of production value uh, to my videos. I want to at least stand out uh, somewhat. I don't want to be known as that guy that just throws videos together. You know, I really do want to uh, increase uh, production value and make it valuable, not only to you guys, but also to the people that help pay my bills. Um, you know, I do have a few uh, companies that uh, sponsor me and want to work with me at times. And I really need, uh, that support in order to keep going. Um, uh, because if, if I didn't, these videos, I mean, would just take up entirely too much time and it just wouldn't be worth it. But the fact that it is a labor of love and that I actually enjoy doing this, um, it, it makes it a, a worth it so much more when you are actually rewarded for your efforts. So, um, so let's see how this transition goes between the first song and the next song. Form with just a regular old set of extension tubes. So I hopped on Amazon.com, grabbed myself a really decent set of digital and... All right, sounds pretty good. It seems like it was going straight in there just fine. And it looks like it's going to transition right about here. I'll adjust the volume. So if it's not going to make it all the way to a clip, I'll kind of back it off some and then start... I'll, I'll just throw in uh, another clip and then turn down the volume a little bit there so it transitions out. <clears throat> and then I'll add the rest of my uh, background music to cover the entire length of my video. And again, this doesn't have to take very long, uh, and you don't always have to do all this kind of stuff. I just like to do it. I know a lot of people that do a lot less, and they get content cranked out a lot faster than I do, and that's okay. Um, I'm not necessarily interested in doing everything exactly the way everyone else is. Um, I'm just trying to make my videos the way I like to make them. That's pretty much it. There's not much motivation behind why I do the things that I do just because I I try to make stuff that I like. Okay, so now this is what the outro should sound like. With your friends and throw it all around the social network, things and such as and the whatnots, and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the new things that we got going on here at the Photo Video Show. At any rate, I'm your host, Mark Puckett. Thanks again for stopping right here at the Photo Video Show, and I will see you guys again on the next one. And now we are finally done. So I am done with editing all of the video.
for any of you guys that are out there and you're actually uh, used to using uh, video editors, especially Final Cut Pro 10, you know, most of this stuff will probably is probably going to make sense to you. But if there's anyone out there that's actually aspiring to try to get into doing YouTube videos, don't look at this entire process and think, oh, my God, I can never do that. You're not going to start off like this. Absolutely. No way, shape or form. You're going to start off like this. You're going to just start off doing what you know to do and what you're able to do. The worst thing you can do, though, is stop learning. So once you get into it, keep Keep moving forward. Keep learning new stuff. Add new tools to your tool belt. That way you can progress and make amazing things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And also support the show by buying things uh, in the Amazon links below. So that is how I manage to keep this channel up and running through all of this technical crap. So I appreciate it. Thanks again for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Ronald Puckett, and I'll see you guys again on the next one.